And uh, gentlemen, we're coming to you uh, from Brussels, where I feel the mood, uh, please have a seat, where the mood is still somewhat <coughs> somber after yesterday's <coughs> semi-final loss to France. But uh, I think the Red Devils did this country proud. Now, we're trying, I'm not sure if we'll be able to lift up uh, the mood here, but this is certainly what we will try in this very <coughs> first panel of the day, ladies and gentlemen, framing the debate a shifting global order and an alliance under pressure. Now, we are going to start uh, this uh, Brussels summit dialogue at a very high altitude. I couldn't have asked for three better speakers <coughs> to kick us off. And ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, please join me in welcoming the German Defense Minister, Minister Ursula von der Leyen. Thank you. He has just been confirmed and reappointed <coughs> in his previous post. <coughs> Delighted to welcome <coughs> him here. The Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu, ladies and gentlemen, is here. And certainly, not last but not least, I'm very delighted to welcome <coughs> the Polish Foreign Minister Jacek Czaputowicz is here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we will, of course, engage in a very intense debate within the next 45 minutes with, the, with your help, of course. Uh, but before we do, all three speakers get uh, two minutes uh, of introductory short statements. Two minutes <coughs> is what the time is. I know it's relatively short, but the more time we have than for uh, the following discussion. Minister von der Leyen, you're up. <coughs> your opening statement. Yes, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, two minutes for three remarks. First of all, my first remark is um, NATO gave us way more than <coughs> only the strongest alliance, military alliance in the world. Um, because if we look back, the transatlantic security umbrella uh, was an umbrella under which our economies could grow, the economies that are the foundation <coughs> for our uh, social cohesion. Um, they were, NATO was the security umbrella under which democracies could grow and the rule of law could grow. There was one specific characteristic at the very beginning in the first decades of NATO that was American leadership that was composed of two things. American leadership that, yes, had the American interest in its focus, but it was always combined with caring for the allies' common goods and shaping the topics of the future. And um, yeah. it was President Bush Sr. who saw in the wake of <coughs> unification when the wall came down and Soviet Union collapsed and Warsaw Pact uh, vanished, that there's a rearrangement of the world. He offered at that time to Europe, as he called it, partnership in leadership. Unfortunately, Europe wasn't able to grasp this opportunity. They hide away. And uh, this, now we have to learn it the hard way. Second remark, um, yes, we are having issues among the al allies, without any question. Tariffs, climate change, Iran deal, defense spending, we're going to talk about it. But discussions are okay. That's what democracy is all about. The question is, are we going to let these debates weaken our commitment or are we keeping up the essential? And the essential is, are the values I was just talking about. Our opponents would love to see division in NATO. We should not allow that. Our opponents are Russia, China, cyber attacks, populist movements, you know all that. And therefore, my third and last remark is, among the top, the top priority among our security interests is cohesion in NATO. Cohesion in NATO is built up from trust and, of course, capabilities or fair engagement. There is a point, the Americans have a fair point. We have to do more as Europeans. Therefore, we just created the European Defense Union. We just created the European Defense Fund that stops fragmentation. But trust is a very precious thing, too. And the trust is, for example, our engagement in Afghanistan. What the, the very one time that Article 5 was triggered. So I hope the clear message of this summit will be unity and resolve. 
Thank you so much. Unity and uh, resolve, reiterating once again the relevance of social cohesion and trust in the alliance. Many things we touched <coughs> upon. Of course, I'll come back and, uh, and try to follow up. But first up, uh, I'm delighted now to uh, give the floor to Foreign Minister Mevlu Cavusoglu for his two-minute introductory thank, statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I'm delighted to be here. When NATO, NATO was uh, founded, there were two blocks and more or less we knew where the threat was coming from and what kind of threat uh, it was. Now it has changed. Now we see uh, similar aggressions from some countries and from some regions, but besides that typical aggression, we see hybrid uh, warfare. And not, not all, only hybrid warfare to our allies or alliance, but to the economy as well. Look at the uh, uh, hybrid virus uh, Petya, uh, causing $2.2 billion only in the third quarter of 2017. And now the main threat, one of the main threats is terrorism. And it's coming from different parts of the world, but we are all uh, target at the, the same time. And the situation in the regions uh, have also impacts uh, to our uh, region, uh, like a situation in Syria, like Libya and beyond. And it is not only uh, migratory flows, which has been <clears throat> actually shaking the political and social landscape, particularly uh, Europe uh, now, uh, but also terrorism mm. and all sorts of uh, terrorism. Uh, therefore, we need to <clears throat> uh, act together and we need uh, solidarity and unity more than ever to face all these kind of uh, challenges. Let me also emphasize one uh, challenge that uh, European societies and beyond have been facing. This is intolerance, intolerance to others and hatred. I mean uh, Islamophobia, Christianophobia, anti-Semitism <coughs> and racism and anti-migrant sentiments. And this negative trend also uh, has been undermining the stability and also uh, political landscape in many European countries now shaking even the democratically elected government. Of course, NATO cannot do a lot more, a lot of, uh, to face this challenge, but the uh, member states and the OEC and European Union, Council of Europe, and the other organizations together can also reverse this uh, negative trend which is undermining uh, the public order as well. Thank you so much. Again, solidarity and uh, union, so cohesion and trust, I see a pattern emerging. Uh, I think uh, these are the terms that will be coming up uh, often within the next uh, 48 hours. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to yield the floor to the Polish Foreign Minister for his introductory statement. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to take part in this debate. So let me start by uh, reminding you that Poland joined NATO in 1999. It was uh, 10 years after the end of the Cold War. It was a very good decision, which gave us a feeling of security. But now we all know that uh, there are new challenges, and the most important, these revisionist states, particularly Russia. <clears throat> so we are for reinforcement NATO. Very important decisions were taken at the NATO summit in Warsaw. Uh, two years ago, a forward presence, and it was, uh, uh, now we have to just maintain this decision to reinforce this presence and uh, further strengthen, and it would be my message, to strengthen defense and deterrence capability of NATO. So uh, it is what we expect from this summit. But I must say that last two years a lot of uh, very important decisions were taken, a lot was done in order <coughs> to guarantee security for uh, our region. Uh, Central and Eastern uh, European countries are uh, uh, threatened by the Russian uh, aggressive policy. Of course, it is policy directed vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine, but we can uh, expect uh, that, uh, that if Russia continues this aggressive policy, it may threaten also other countries, like Skripal case shows that also Western democracies could be threatened by these policies. I agree that at this moment, transatlantic unity is crucial for, for, for our security. We have to maintain unity and further modernize the alliance for, our, for the benefit of all of us. 
Thank you so much to uh, the <coughs> Polish uh, foreign minister. Now, uh, Minister von der Leyen, uh, judging by his tweets, uh, Germany is certainly on Donald Trump's mind. Uh, uh, it, it's, <coughs> it, it's, he, he has clearly not just criticized, but even singled out uh, Germany on numerous occasions for not, uh, uh, by his uh, uh, standard, not fulfilling its obligations uh, towards NATO, criticizing Germany for not spending 2% of its GDP on defense, as was agreed in Wales mm. in 2014. We might not say this often, but doesn't the American president have a point here? Uh, our American <coughs> friends do have a point since 2014. That was uh, the summit in Wales when President Obama um, and all the allies committed themselves to move towards 2% in a decade later. Um, we have to see where Germany does come from. We came out of a period of 25 years of budget cuts, and then the security arena totally changed. Russia, ISIL, Africa, just to name the buzzwords. At that point, Germany was <coughs> down to 1.1%. Now we are rising since then. We need it for the armed forces desperately. We are rising since then. We just passed the budget for the next year, a rise of 11%. And if I project in 2024, in real terms, we will have a rise in a defense budget of 80%. Why that? Because the GDP is strong. So this is one part of the balance sheet. I think the second part is as important, and I would like to see the businessman, Donald Trump, uh, to not only to look at the balance sheet, but also to look at the output. <coughs> What is the output for NATO? Well, I must say Germany is the second largest troop contributor to NATO overall. We're the second largest net payer. We're just creating the headquarter, JSEC, uh, in modernizing the NATO structure, just to name a few topics. So we are moving in the right direction, but there's still more work to, do to do. We're committed to the 2% goal, and uh, I hope to take my friends along with that, um, with that commitment. So the 2% uh, contribution on the part of Germany is coming eventually, is what you're saying? Um, it is coming. We're moving towards it. But you just have to look at the sums. Where we did come from, the lowest point was very low. And by now, we uh, invested a lot. And I would love to see more focus <coughs> on capability who is giving what kind of capabilities to NATO, and who is engaging that is contribution, because you can spend 2% on your national defense budget without doing <coughs> anything for NATO. This doesn't say anything what the output for NATO is, and therefore we have set cash, capabilities, and contributions. And speaking of capabilities, there have been reports that the German military equipment has been somewhat uh, outdated and in some cases not fully operational. So uh, when you talk about German, not just willingness, but also ability to, uh, to contribute, uh, these reports are false or uh, No, they, they are correct because what I did is complete transparency. I think we are the most transparent armed forces in the world because I needed that <coughs> debate after 25 years of budget cuts. This makes something with your armed forces. And we do have partly hollow structures. We need a modernization process, the whole cyber topic. I just started a cyber troop of 14,000 servicemen and service women, only focused on cyber. And this needs investment. And if you want to convince your parliament to raise the budget, you have to be transparent why you need all that money. All right, thank you so much. Uh, for Mr. Ciaosholo, now Turkey's contribution to NATO, I believe, is undisputed. Uh, to this day, it is still the second largest military uh, in NATO. But there are some who fear that uh, Turkey is drifting away from the alliance, pointing towards Turkey's order of a Russian <coughs> missile defense system, which evoked a response on the part of Washington saying, unprecedented, if you will, saying we will impose sanctions on Turkey for ordering uh, the Russian missile defense system. Is it true? Is Turkey moving away from the alliance? No, Turkey is not moving anywhere else. Turkey is NATO ally. Turkey is uh, part of uh, Europe and Turkey has been a member of many European institutions, and Turkey has been trying to be a member of the European Union for 60 years. And not only uh, are, I mean, uh, when we buy S-400, uh, Turkey is questioned, but when I reach uh, Middle East, 
when I go to Central Asia, when I go to Latin America, or opening up African policy has been questioned by our Western friends. And they want to stay only at the door of Europe, European Union. They don't want us to go anywhere else. But Turkey, Ukraine, and the countries living in our geography has to balance uh, their foreign policy. And, and we don't have to uh, choose between uh, this and that. And we don't see our good relations with any country or any region as an alternative to others. Let's come back to S-400. We have uh, urgent needs, and I have to meet it. And I have to cover my airspace. I have to protect that. Forget about the missiles in the region. Even terrorist organizations have missiles and rockets. <clears throat> and I, had, I, I, I wanted to, I tried to buy from my allies. I wanted to buy from uh, US for the last 10 years. It didn't work. I wanted to buy from other countries. Forget about the air defense system. Now Germany is also trying to block the needs that we, had, we are buying from. Uh, we need to buy from Germany. So I had to buy. And I couldn't get it from my NATO allies. So I, Russia gave me the best proposal. And now I am buying from Russia. But you understand the signal that might send to some uh, members within the alliance? No, this is, you know, I, I can understand the concern. The key issue is here, this, the S-400 system shouldn't see NATO and NATO systems as enemy. This is the key issue. And we are more vigilant and sensitive than any other NATO allies on this issue. And like S-300 that uh, Greece has, those, those systems uh, don't see uh, NATO allies as enemy. So in this case, I signed a MOU with Eurosum, which is French and Italian consortium. And, but this is a mid-term and long-term project. It's a joint production. And now uh, there is a threat at my borders. Only Italian safety is there and also uh, Spanish uh, batteries there. And uh, even Germany withdraw their batteries from my border. So who is going to protect my air space and my border? In this case, Turkey is a sovereign country. Yes, we are NATO ally, but I have to uh, take measures to make sure that we cover our uh, airspace and we protect our airspace. So the ordering of the... And I don't believe in the sanctions. If there is any sanction coming from <clears throat> any country, and uh, obviously Turkey will reciprocate. <clears throat> and sanctions didn't work. Sanctions didn't work with Iran. Sanctions didn't work with Russia. And I see that EU actually decides sanctions on Iran or Russia. I see the key EU member states have been violating that. Who are the, uh, the best trade partner of Iran? France, Germany, and Italy. Who are doing good trade with Russia? Obviously, it is very clear. All right. So, so the ordering of the Russian missile defense system is uh, not a sign of Turkey mm -hmm. drifting away uh, yeah. from the alliance. But speaking of Russia, uh, Foreign Minister Chaputovich, in the midst of the rift between Germany uh, and the U.S., uh, uh, you have proposed, your government has proposed, uh, um, that you would be willing up, uh, to spend up to $2 billion uh, to entice the U.S. to move its uh, forces from Germany uh, to Poland to build a permanent military uh, base there. Uh, you know that such a move would provoke an outcry from Russia, don't you? Uh, do, do you think at this particular point that we have, and amid the changing security environment, do you think it would be a wide move to, to switch, to move the U.S. forces from Germany to Poland at this particular point? We are talking probably about different proposals. We never proposed mm -hmm. to move uh, force, American forces from Germany to Poland. We just wanted to make uh, American forces stationing in Poland uh, permanent and increased, but not uh, to the detriment of Germany. It was never on the table. So gener generally, we would like to increase uh, military presence of our allies, particularly American uh, uh, ally in Poland, because it will uh, strengthen the deterrence uh, of the all alliance. Uh, that's right. There is a discussion concerning the reaction of Russia, but uh, we argue that Russia uh, brought uh, any international commitments invading uh, Ukraine 
and uh, uh, with annexation of Crimea. So we have to simply defend ourselves. And all decisions taken by the alliance in Wales, in Warsaw, and hopefully here in Brussels, is the reaction to this new threat. We would like strongly cooperate with Germany in uh, the field of military, in the production, and we see American troops stationing in Germany as a support for also for us, for our security. So it is not an alternative. It is not our proposal, mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. But, to, but the, the reaction on the part of Russia, and you have alluded to it, uh, uh, would be inevitable. Uh, uh, do, do, you, do you think... Uh, no, already the reaction is, uh, is quite, quite negative, so they criticize, they mobilize their military forces uh, on the border. Already, but we have to react to the aggressive policy. So I think that the dual track policy of NATO, which, 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 which uh, is the, the, just to maintain sanctions and to seek to Russia that we, the uh, wor uh, Western world, democratic world, will not accept the uh, breaching of international uh, uh, order is, is very important. Uh, also, we have to think about Ukraine. Poland uh, strongly supports uh, territorial integrity of Ukraine, and we have to uh, support that country, and we have to ask them. We cannot uh, uh, think only about uh, our own security, I mean particularly Western countries. Mm -hmm. Threat perception in Poland, uh, Baltic states is different than in uh, France or Germany. Mm -hmm. So we are aware of that fact, and particularly Georgia and Ukraine. So we have to uh, counter mm -hmm. aggressive policy of Russia. So this is the aim, main uh, challenge for NATO these days. Mm -hmm. These days, a lot of challenges for NATO these days. That, that's for certain. Minister uh, von der Leyen, you, you stressed and emphasized unity and uh, cohesion. Um, <coughs> many Americans, though, see uh, the launch of the permanent structured cooperation, PESCO, um, which pulls, of course, the defense efforts of uh, 25 EU states, not as a supplementary, but as uh, in competition. Uh, with NATO, they see this initiative as a threat uh, to the alliance. Uh, what would you, uh, what would you respond and reply to your American counterpart? Well, I would say, look at me. I'm the defense minister of Germany. I have my NATO hat on. I have my European Union hat on, European Defense Union. I have one single set of forces. I would be crazy to compete with myself. So, therefore, it's in our uh, utmost interest. Um, to be complementary to NATO. We have been always asked, the Europeans, and rightly so, by our American or Canadian friends, for example, to strengthen the European pillar. That's what we're doing now. And um, if you look at the numbers, we have 20 countries that are NATO members as well as PESCO members. They have the same interest, interest as I have, one single set of forces, no competition but complementarity. And... Um, the second thing I'd say to the one who would ask me is, you know, there are tasks for NATO. NATO will always be collective defense, always. But there are other problems around Europe uh, where I do not see NATO. For example, stabilize countries in uh, Africa, our immediate neighbor. There is, this is a European task where Europe has to be not only with military means, but also with economic development, with diplomacy, this whole bunch of comprehensive security that is needed there. This is an original uh, European task, and for that we need procedures and structures. That's what the European Defense mm. Union is for. So clearly uh, not in competition, uh, but rather, it's, if you, if you will, reducing the, the reliance on, on, yeah. on the Americans. Well, it's, even, on, uh, it's e even the other way around. If you look, for example, at military mobility now, mm. a big issue in NATO. Um, where do we have to fulfill military mobility? In Europe. Therefore, we just had it on the European Council as a European task to uh, make uh, military mobility possible. And now, with the result from the European Council, we have uh, the pledge here at the NATO summit. And therefore, you see, it's in NATO's interest that Europe gets organized in defense matters. Before I get the audience uh, involved, uh, we're meeting here, obviously, uh, amid very interesting times, uh, Defense Minister. Uh, you've been at it for a very long time, very experienced Defense Minister. Uh, the shape of NATO, the very current st uh, state of shape. Are you concerned? Are you concerned about the future of the alliance? Um, 
I, I'm not concerned about the future of the alliance, but I realize because there are so many debates, and I will not go in details because it takes too much time, that uh, yes, we are worried, but on the other hand, we start to realize how precious, how precious this NATO alliance is, and that's the same values we are fighting for. And if you look at these values, democracy, rule of law, multilateral order, this is not a given. If we do not stand up for it, nobody else will stand up for it. And therefore, we have to invest even more in NATO, we have to communicate about NATO, we have to convince ourselves and our friends that it's worth to strengthen this NATO alliance. Minister Chaosholo, looking at NATO today, um, what, what shape, what state is the alliance in? How would you characterize it? Well, as I was trying to explain what kind of threat that NATO and uh, alliance uh, have been facing. Therefore, today, for instance, uh, the main threat is coming from terrorist organizations and from different parts of the world. Therefore, uh, the solidarity and unity is more important than ever. And it is so wise that NATO is going to have a base in Iraq to train the uh, forces, Iraqi forces. And eventually, we also advise that uh, NATO could also go to Libya to train the local forces. Of course, Libya has been uh, facing other problems. I hope we can reach a political uh, solution over there. Therefore, the solidarity is important, but without any double standard. Some of the NATO allies, for instance, supporting some of the terrorist organization or working together with some of the terrorist organization. Can you imagine now uh, NATO in NATO? Could you be have, more specific? We have been always uh, discussing uh, between ourselves uh, how to counterbalance uh, Russia in here or there. But in Syria, for instance, United States and Russia was try, was, were competing each other to control PKK, mm. YPG terrorist organization, even though they both know that uh, they are the same terrorist organization. Now Russia understood that this is real a terrorist organization, so they cannot control and they don't deal with uh, YPG PKK. But now together with US, for instance, we are trying to uh, clean uh, Mimbich from YPG and PKK. But how come they enter the YPG uh, Mimbich? How come they control 25% of uh, the territory of Syria? And they are destabilizing all this region and they force even other Kurds to leave these areas. And we are hosting now 400 Syrian Kurds. And mo most of them were forced by YPG PKK terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, we need to await double standards mm. when we are uh, mm. dealing with the, all these sensitive mm. issues and we are, we are challenging the terrorism and the others. For Mr. Chaputovic, uh, what state is NATO in at the moment? Uh, how do you evaluate the current shape of the alliance? I think that it is uh, under the process of transformation in order to meet new challenges. The, the biggest one since the end of the Cold uh, War, generally we assess very positively. But for us, NATO, it is first of all transatlantic unity. Uh, NATO differs from the European Union by presence of the United States, it's obvious. And only the United States can guarantee security for countries like Poland on the eastern flank. We are for cooperation between the European Union. We are not against. We support very much uh, preparation within the European Union to build uh, complementary units to face challenges from the south. But at the same time, for us, it is a military challenge which is the most important. It, we differ within the European Union, European Union by, by our uh, geopolitical location. Uh, on the eastern flank, uh, countries uh, face different challenges. Mm -hmm. So we are for strengthening uh, NATO, and uh, we hope we will maintain this unity. However, at the same time, there is a concern, as it was mentioned. There are differences between the European Union. When I meet my colleagues, foreign ministers, the, the Council of Foreign Ministers of the European Union, we discuss issues li like Iran, for example, and we differ, European Union, uh, generally, uh, and, and United States. What policy should be taken vis-a-vis -vis Iran or trade relations? It is not a good situation for Poland because we would like to have both strong European Union and transatlantic unity, uh, uh, very good relations with the United States. Therefore, our policy within the European Union is be there, 
but at the same time call for discussion with mm. the United States. It's a cornerstone of, of our foreign mm. policy. Mr. von der Leyen, uh, the U.S. president is conducting a somewhat unconventional style, if you will, in politics. Uh, uh, the G7 uh, summit, for instance, ended uh, in somewhat of a disarray. Do you fear that at the end of this uh, NATO summit uh, <coughs> we're going to have the same picture? Do you fear that uh, we might have disagreement, open disagreement, at the end of these two days between the U.S. and the rest of the alliance? Um. Well, we all, we all 29, we should <laughs> not always reduce it to one and the rest. Uh, we all 29 worked very hard for this NATO summit. And um, this <coughs> is, I have seen quite a lot of NATO summits by now. So uh, this is the most substantial I've seen so far. So there's a lot on the table. And I, I'll do my very best, and I know that our friends will do their very best to go in depth in the topics and to debate about what we have on the table um, so that we have at the very end a successful summit. That's our goal. <coughs> Why is it the most substantial in your view? Because if you look at what is on the table, what we've, we've progressed, for example, since Wales, uh, the, the mission in Iraq we're starting, the modernizing of the NATO structure, command structure, for example, there's a lot on the table. So um, the different uh, perspectives on the east, but also on the south, we have on the table. So you, if you look at the communique, mm -hmm. there is a lot of substance, and we can be proud of it. So we should really talk in depth about the topics and not only focus on uh, one single topic. So a lot on the table, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I think that much uh, is uh, for certain. Uh, very curious how the discussions <clears throat> will play out. Now I would like to bring you in uh, and uh, give you the opportunity to ask a couple of questions. The, uh, let, let me stress this. Uh, the emphasis is on question. Uh, we have uh, just a short amount of time left, so I would uh, very much ask you to be uh, uh, brief. I think we have microphones around the table. Uh, first one, uh, we, can we get a microphone uh, right here? to Thomas uh, Borkhoff from uh, the German Marshall Fund. <coughs> please pass the microphone. And even though I have done it already, please introduce yourself again. Thomas Kleine Brockhoff, German Marshall Fund. Qu question to Minister von der Leyen. Uh, you have uh, mentioned that Germany stands by the 2% goal. Can you please tell us when Germany will reach 2%? If you can tell me how the GDP is beyond 224, I can tell you exactly what it is. But <laughs> as it is in relation to the GDP, you see the, the problem to project it in the future. What we uh, can say for sure <laughs> is that we will spend 1.5% in 2024. And as I said, it's a rise of 80% within a decade. Show me another country who has managed that. Mm. Do you feel unfairly singled out? No, we are... <laughs> <laughs> We're almost used to that by now. <laughs> we can cope with that. Because, as I said, there's a fair point in it. Uh, but I stress the other part, and that's a good thing about it, uh, to debate about who's doing what for NATO. And I would like and um, ask you to look at the second and the third metric, capabilities and commitments. It changes the picture. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so we're u the Germans are used to the criticism by now. Uh, next question, please. Greetings, uh, uh, Irakli Alassania, former Minister of Defense of Georgia. I want to take you back 10 years ago. Uh, there was a Bucharest summit, and uh, there was a decision on NATO about Georgia and Ukraine, not to give the MAP, but eventually have the membership in the air. <coughs> it was looked like an invitation for Russians to go in, in both countries. Do you regret this decision? that not giving MAP to Georgia? And what do you think where, when the appetite of another expansion of NATO will come? Thank you. All right, thank you. The question was to anyone, to the three? Please, well, uh, Foreign Minister, well, Charles Schulte. As Turkey, we fully support the uh, <coughs> enlargement, NATO's enlargement policy. Mm. And we believe that uh, Georgia, Macedonia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina should be included to alliance as soon as possible, and I understand your uh, disappointment, and I agree with you. 
And this is one of the problem actually in, in NATO. Uh, the, the, the different positions from different countries about uh, Georgia's membership or activating the map, as well as the membership of other uh, two uh, can aspirant uh, countries. And therefore, we fully support, and this is one of the priority of Turkey and the NATO, and we will emphasize this during this summit as well. For Mr. Chaputovic, uh, the gentleman from, from Georgia yes. picking up on uh, what, you, what you alluded to already. Yeah, that's very important. I think that the Poland always supported membership of Georgia and Ukraine, other countries uh, in NATO. I think that we should keep an uh, open door uh, within NATO. It is a policy. But I think, and I would like to refer to your questions concerning uh, Russian aggressive policy. I think it was a mistake made by European uh, countries uh, in 2008, Nord Stream 1 provided resources for Russia to modernize the army, and uh, the Russia did it, simply modernized the army, invaded Georgia, then Ukraine, currently pr plays very negative role in Syria. Uh, I do not agree with you. I think that there are Western positions there, uh, 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 jo uh, and Russia supporting Assad. Uh, it is a very negative role there. Skripal case and so on. It was a mistake of, of Western states. We were very much against of maintaining uh, eco strong economic ties uh, with Russia because we thought it will be a very aggressive policy in the future. Now we are discussing about Nord Stream 2, mm -hmm. another mistake, and you may ask the in 10 years' time at this kind of meeting, why we did not react. But it is not our position. It is a position of other, uh, other countries within the European Union, which would like to continue mm. building Nord Stream 2. Uh, even most of countries are against, and the United States see the problem. Uh, it is, we should counter, rather, mm. Russia. Mm -hmm until it changes its aggressive policy. You can tell the temperature in the room is rising. All speakers have stood up at this particular point, uh, <laughs> trying to feel it chiming in. So I just want to lose you. I've already seen 20, 30 hands up. It's impossible for you to get in. So I, apologies uh, up front. We only have uh, nine minutes left uh, before the Canadian Prime Minister comes on stage. The lady is up next. Please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Aura Salla. I'm from the European Commission and from Finland. And I just wanted to ask, because Trump has just said that uh, at the NATO summit that Germany is captive of Russia. So how would you react Germany on is that? What, please? Captive of Russia. Russia. Captive. Russia. You are captive? taken by Russia. Yeah. Captive of Russia. This, this was this morning? He just came in, in, in Twitter, so, on Twitter. So he's awake. Okay. We, uh, <laughs> okay. So we should be... Uh, it should be interesting. Uh, I do not really understand what he means by that, <laughs> hard to say. But in general, um, yes, yes uh, if there's a country in the region who has uh, seen the change in Russian behavior, then it is Europe, and within Europe it is Germany, of course. On the other hand, um, I hope that the president will go with a strong signal of resolve and unity from this summit to his meeting with President Putin. It's good that the two of them are talking together, because if I look, for example, at our chancellor, she's talking since 13 years on a regular basis with <coughs> the Russian president. We have a lot of issues with Russia without any doubt. But uh, on the other hand, you should keep a communication line between countries or alliances and uh, opponents without any question. Right. So um, I'm curious to listen in depth in yeah. the <laughs> meeting what the American president is meaning by that. And we have seven Good more question. minutes for new tweets to come in throughout the <laughs> session. Uh, please, please go ahead. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mingus Campbell. I'm from the United Kingdom and I'm a vice president of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Mm. I hope our Turkish colleague will forgive me if I say that his explanation for the purchase of a Russian surface-to-air missile system is unconvincing. And I wonder the extent to which it, the government of Turkey taking that decision took account of the political significance of such a purchase <coughs> against the background of the fact that Mr. Putin is determined to undermine NATO. He did so, if you like, just a few days ago by rehearsing the notion of a security structure for, the Europe, for Europe, right. which did not in involve the retention of NATO. All right. Uh, what better way in which to undermine NATO than to begin to sell members of NATO Russian equipment? All right. Well, <coughs> first of all, 
we have good relations with Russia, but we disagree with Russia on many issues, including Russia's role in Syria and his support to uh, Assad, as my dear colleague mentioned. And we, some of, many of you already forgetting Crimea, but we are against the illegal annexation of Crimea, and we fully support the territorial integrity of Georgia as well, and many European countries stopped supporting Georgia's territorial integrity. So we don't agree with Russia on and everything. This is not a political decision. <coughs> I, as I mentioned, it is my <coughs> urgent need. <coughs> Who is going to meet that? Yeah. Now Russia is, uh, sorry, NATO is able to cover only 30% of my airspace. And who is going to protect my nation, my people, from the missiles coming from regime or from any other countries? Can you do that as UK? You are our, one of best friends and one of our best ally. I tried to buy from UK, I tried to buy from uh, France, also from United States. And now Trump promises that they can easily sell patriots to Turkey. But when we ask Congress, it, it's not like that, it's vice versa. So who is going to protect my air space? Can you guarantee me? And Germany withdraw their patriots and so <laughs> other countries. And only the second Spanish time. and yes, excuse me, dear colleague. I have to say that. Yes, excuse me, dear but colleague. But who is going to protect my airspace? <laughs> it is my urgent need, and I try to buy from many other countries, including China. But I get the best <coughs> deal from Russia, and I bought it. Turkey is a sovereign country, and Turkey can give its uh, own decisions. Yeah. So, but it is very technical, not political. Let, just, let's just, give yeah, uh, yeah. the just for secretary the archives, please. because please. it's the second time now. Yes. Uh, we were very uh, happy at Karaman Marash, and thank you for being a very good host nation. We were in a rotational scheme, and Germany was there for three or four years, which is a lot. And then other followed, you know, the Dutch, the Spanish. So uh, this is within a rotational scheme that we were, as all the allies, protecting a, sense, a, a critical border, um, but you cannot say we withdrew, but, but, but we were there for Spain people. and well, it, 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 Italy has been prolonging yeah. like real allies. All right. Mm. <coughs> well, la ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, listen, I'm a, I'm a German citizen. No, I'm very no, no. frank and open. For, I have to say this. You for, know, a minister, for a minister, I'm a German citizen of Turkish descent. You're putting me in a very tough spot here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so th 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 don't, thank you. Don't say this. Th thank you. Don't so. say this. You know what happened to Mesut Özil and Ilkay. That's just, ladies and gentlemen, ladies just and gentlemen we Turkey have three president. minutes left, and I would like to dedicate the remainder of the three minutes uh, for some closing uh, remarks, uh, starting in the reverse order this time, from Mr. Chaputo. From your point of view, uh, what is you feel that NATO is going to remain relevant in the future? Uh, I can already sense what the biggest threat from your perspective is. Um, is. Is NATO equipped to handle that? I think, yes, uh, if we take good decisions, I am positive we will at that summit, so it will remain the relevant organizations, main, organ uh, main uh, organizations providing uh, security for, for the European continent. I'm thinking about this tweet presented recently by President of the United States. There is something behind the security scene, this tension between Germany and, 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 and United States, relating rather to trade issues, not to security. It is not good, but we have to also understand, and I try to understand American policy saying that the relations between Russia and some European countries, or Germany, are maybe too close and they are not taken into consideration by, by our uh, German partner or colleague, uh, our security threat. Concerning Nord Stream 2, for example, right. to be kept if it's too, too strong, but to, 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 to become uh, dependent and give a, a possibility to Russia to develop its military and then conduct aggressive policy, it is something in that. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, for Minister Chavushola, uh, looking <coughs> ahead, uh, not just towards the next 48 hours, but uh, the next few months and years, uh, the, the future of NATO, how, how relevant do you think it will remain? Well, uh, NATO uh, is relevant, and Turkey uh, and will uh, con con contribute to NATO activities. And in the future, uh, when we see the... Uh, <coughs> the threats and challenges that uh, NATO uh, is, uh, and allies uh, have been facing, 
uh, NATO will continue to be uh, very relevant, mm -hmm. not only militarily but also politically uh, relevant. But NATO should adapt itself to the future. And NATO-EU relations is important, enlargement is important, and also uh, counterparting uh, terrorism, uh, fighting terrorism is important. Therefore, we need to adapt ourselves to the uh, future as well mm. and the new developments. NATO needs That's to adapt itself to future uh, challenges. Uh, Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen, uh, the future of uh, NATO, you remain optimistic? Um, we have to work hard for that. Uh, my father was 15 years old when the war ended. He worked all his life to build up the European Union and to strengthen the German-American and European-American friendship, which is NATO. Um, I'm almost 60 years old. I realize, I always took that for granted as a given. I realize it's up to our generation now to renew that because I want my children in 50 years to live under the security umbrella of NATO in a democracy, and that's worth fighting for it. Ladies and gentlemen, please. <laughs> Framing the debate as shifting global order and an alliance under pressure, I think we did frame the debate. Uh, if anyone was sleepy before, you're surely awake now. I can, <laughs> can assure you that NATO engages the Brussels Summit Dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome me and uh, join me in thanking these wonderful speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank 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 you.